In this video, I'm going to be talking about earn models, which is a mental framework commonly used in probability theory and statistics. In many undergraduate level courses on probability, this is one of the first things that, are, that is being taught. And the reason for that is that it's a very elementary problem that's quite easy to understand, but then in the end, it can be used to solve a very wide class of problems. So hopefully, if you understand this, you're going to be able to solve many different problems within probability. We start out the video by giving a problem statement. So we don't only have an urn in the model, we also have some balls that are lying inside of this urn. And for the sake of this video, we consider that you have two different colors of balls. So you have red balls and you have blue balls. And then we introduce two variables, A, which is the number of red balls in the urn, and B, which is the number of blue balls in the urn. And as you can see on the left, I have an example here of A equals one and B equals three, which is going to be used throughout this video. And then we take an action. So we have this urn and we randomly pick n balls out of the urn. So the person that is picking here is picking with uniform probability, which means that for our example, there will be a 25% chance of picking any one out of these four balls. And then we ask ourselves the fundamental question here. What is the probability that exactly k out of the n balls are red? So we're taking some balls out of the urn and we look into our hand and see a certain number of red balls. And we ask ourselves, what is the probability that exactly K balls are red? And let's make some remarks here. So first of all, we pick the balls without replacement. What this means is that every time a ball is taken out, we don't replace it with a new ball. So each time we pick a ball, the number of balls in the urn decreases. And as a consequence of that remark, n has to be smaller than a plus b. Why is this? Well, a plus b is the total number of balls inside of the urn, and n is the number of balls we take out. And of course, we cannot take out more balls than are already present in the urn. And as I mentioned previously, there are many problems in probability that can be solved using this model, and specifically using this question. So the question here in bullet point three. So if you're able to answer this quite simple question for the case of the urn, there are many other problems that can be expressed in the same way, and then the answer is given immediately. So it's quite a powerful tool if you're able to solve this question here. So let's solve that question, but for one specific case where we define all of these four variables. So A is one and B is three as before, but now we also define that we're going to take one ball out of the urn and we want to know the probability that one out of these one balls are red. So in other words, we take one ball out of the urn and we want to know the probability that that ball is red. And I think it's fairly obvious here that the answer to this question is 25%. But let's do it, uh, this calculation in a structured way and then we can keep this structure to move on to more general cases. So we start with the classical definition of probability, which is that the probability of an event happening is the number of favorable cases divided by the number of possible cases. So in our case, the event is that K balls are red. So K balls out of these balls we took out are red. And a favorable case is a case in which the ball was red a possible case is just anything that can happen when you take out n balls from the urn. And then we start out by calculating the number of possible cases. And this is quite easy to do. You can just enumerate every possible case that can happen. And in our scenario, we have the first case that you took ball R1, second case that you took ball B1, then B2 and B3. So total, we have four possible cases M. And how many of these cases are favorable? Well, it's only this one case here where we got the red ball. So G is going to be equal to one. And if we plug these values back into the classical definition of probability, we take M equals four, put it down here, G equals one, put it here, and we get one over four or 25% as expected. Let's then move on 
to a slightly more complicated case where we have changed n to be equal to two. So now we are randomly picking two balls out of the urn and we're asking ourselves, what is the probability that exactly one out of these two balls are red? Well, once again, we use this classical definition of probability and nothing has changed here. So we need to calculate G and M. And once again, we start by calculating the number of possible cases M. And in this case, it's a little bit harder to enumerate every possible case because we get some combinations of different balls and it ends up that the, these combinations can actually outnumber the number of balls themselves. So I'll give two examples of cases here. The first one is that we picked the first red ball and we picked the first blue ball. And another example here is that we picked the first blue ball and we picked the third blue ball. And to clarify, it matters which blue ball we pick. So we would say that B1, B3 is a different case from B1, B2. However, we do not care about the order in which the balls were picked. So for instance, R1, B1 would be the same case as B1, R1. So the only thing we really care about is we look in our hands and we ask ourselves, which balls am I holding? And you don't care about which order you picked up these balls. Now I would suggest that you calculate M for yourself. If you want to do that, then pause the video and in five seconds, I'll show you the solution. So here is the solution. There are six possible cases. So if we have the red ball being picked, then we have three different options for the red, for the blue ball. And in the case of the blue balls, we also have three different options where both balls are blue. So M is going to be equal to six. And as before, we move on to calculate the number of favorable cases. And this is quite straightforward. We saw that we had three cases where we had exactly one red ball, which is a favorable event. And in the end, we apply this back into the classical definition of probability. And we see that there is a 50% chance that one ball is red, given that we take out two balls randomly from the urn. OK. so. This method that we have presented here could in principle be used to solve this problem for any A, B, K, and N. But it would take an absurd amount of time because enumerating all of these cases becomes a very big number very quickly. Even if we just have, let's say, 10 N and 5 K, I think we get close to 200 different possibilities. So it takes a very long time to enumerate all of these possibilities. Therefore, a natural question to ask is, can we do this in a smarter way? And yes, and that way is the binomial coefficient. So what does the binomial coefficient say? Well, it says that if you want to pick two objects out of four objects, where these numbers are examples, then this can be calculated using the following binomial coefficient. So this is the standard notation here, where the number at the top is the number of possible objects in the pot. So this would be the number of balls here. And the number in the bottom is how many balls we take out. And in our case, we're taking two balls out. So if we use the binomial coefficient to calculate M, we'll get something like this, where we have A plus B in the top, because that's the total number of balls. And N is the number of balls that we're going to pick. So we get four, two. And we already know this is six, because that's something we calculated on the previous slide. But let's say you didn't know this. Well, it's no problem, because this binomial coefficient is a standard calculation in almost any calculator. I'll show you now. So if you want the binomial coefficient of four and two, you just type something like this. And as you can see, Wolfram Alpha has already given me the answer that it is six which is exactly what we saw here. What about G? Well, G is actually a little bit more difficult because now it's not enough to just calculate how many ways we can pick a certain number of balls because on top of that, we also have a condition. And that condition is that exactly one out of the two balls we took have to be red. But you can still use the binomial coefficient to calculate this. And the way it's done is the following. 
So first you calculate how many ways can I pick one red ball? And this is going to be the number of possible scenarios in which one red ball is picked. In our case, it's very simple. We have one red ball and we want to pick one ball. And there's only one way to do that, which is to take the one ball that exists. And then we multiply that by the number of ways that we can pick the blue balls. So how many blue balls do we want? Well, it's n, the total number of balls we pick, minus k, because that's how many red balls we have. And we have one blue ball left. In our scenario, this is also fairly easy. We have three different blue balls. We want to take one. How many ways can we do that? Well, either we take ball one, ball two, or ball three. So we have three options. And in the terminology of binomial coefficients, we have one, one here, and we have three, one here. So this is equal to one, this is equal to three, and the product is in total three. And when we're done with this, we just plug it back into the classical definition of probability, and it gives us 50% as we already knew, of course. So using these binomial coefficients, we can actually move on and just define a general formula. So now we move on to the general case. So we have some number A balls here. We don't know how many. We have some number B balls here. Or actually, we know how many, but we don't say explicitly how many they are yet, because we want to keep it general. And then the problem is, what is the probability that exactly k out of the n balls are red? And we also let n and k be general variables here. Well, the first thing we do is the same as in all other cases, which is to calculate the number of possible cases n. And this is quite simple. We know that in total we have a plus b balls in the pot, and we want to take out n balls. So the binomial coefficient will directly give us how many possible cases there are. And then we want to calculate the number of favorable cases. And we start with the number of ways to, we can select the red balls. So in total, we have A red balls. And we want to select K out of those balls to be red because of the problem formulation here. And then we, select, we wonder the number of ways to select the blue balls. So after already selecting K red balls, we have N minus K blue balls left. And in total, there are B blue balls in the pot. So this will give us the number of ways to select the blue balls. And for each way we can select the red balls, we can use any combination of the blue balls. So the total number is going to be the product of the two, as we see in the bottom. And finally, we have to plug this back into the classical definition of probability, which gives us the following. So we have G here divided by M on the right. And this is quite a powerful formula. Because now, regardless of A, B, N, or K, you can calculate this exact probability. Um, for instance, you could take the case we had before with A equals 1, B equals 3, K equals 1, and N equals 2. Plug it in here, and you should get 50%. So let's now move to a different problem. And we can see how this problem can be exactly represented by this earn model. So let's say that you have a standard deck of 52 cards. And this deck has four different um, colors. We have the spades, the hearts, the diamonds, and the clubs. And they're evenly distributed among these four colors. We have 13 cards of each kind. And we want to draw a poker hand of five cards. So we randomly draw five cards out of this deck. And we want to determine the probability that all five cards are spades. Now, this seems like it could be a fairly difficult problem, because we know that when we draw the first card, we have a one in four chance to get a spade. But after we've drawn this card, the probability distribution changes. If we didn't draw a spade, that increases the probability of a spade. And if we did draw a spade, the probability is reduced. However, we can very easily cast this into the earn model. So what would A be, what would B be, what would N be, and what would K be? Once again, I'll let you figure this out on your own if you want. If so, pause the video, and in five seconds, I'll give the answer. Here is the answer. So A is the number of red balls. And in our case, red ball just means whatever we want to draw. 
and we want to draw spades. And there are 13 spades in the deck. B is the number of cards that are not spades. And in our case, that is 39, because the number of hearts plus the number of diamonds plus the number of clubs. And we are taking five cards out of this deck of 52. And we want all five of these cards to be spades. We can just insert this into our formula. And we immediately get that it's about a 0.05% chance. So we see that if you draw, what would it be, 10,000 hands of five cards from 10,000 different decks, then we would expect about five out of those hands to contain five spades. And this is just one example, but there's a fairly wide class of problems that can be solved immediately just using this formula that we used for the EARN model. Do you want to learn more about probability? Well, the first thing that you might want to look into are these binomial coefficients. And I'll put a link in the video description giving more information on this if you're interested. Then you might also want to consider the case with replacement. As I mentioned in our video, we didn't consider replacement at all. So every time we took a ball out, it was gone. But uh, it turns out that if you extend this model to something a little bit broader, where you can also replace balls, then you can solve many more problems. I'm planning to make a couple more videos on probability theory and statistics. Uh, precisely, I'm planning to make 14 more videos. So if you're interested, uh, you can just wait, and there will be more to come. And finally, there is a very nice book on probability and statistics um, written by Gunnar Blom. I can strongly recommend this book. I think it's very well written and it's quite easy to grasp the concepts he's talking about. All of the examples I use in this video came from this book. Finally, here is me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye and maybe we'll meet again. Thank you for listening.